This, this is my favorite thing. But what the hell is even this? Have you ever read Fate Stay Night? Well, you should, and here's why. So a little background, Kinoko Nasu and Takeshi Takeuchi were two dudes, and they made a little indie game studio called Tight Moon, released a game called Tsukihime in 2000, and then went on to make a big boy company, and released Fate Stay Night 2004 for the PC a couple years after that. And it quickly became one of the most popular games in the visual novel genre. But well, what's it even about? So we're talking about the Holy Grail War, where seven masters summon seven servants, which are basically spirits, they're reincarnations of heroes and legends from the past, to fight in order to gather enough magical energy to summon the Holy Grail, which grants one wish. The masters consist of mages, church weirdos, other weirdos, and normal people, and the servants are divided into seven classes. And there's tons of lore to it. So many different kinds of magic, such as magecraft, which isn't actually real magic, but you know, we don't need to talk about that right now. There's crystals, strengthening, projection, reality marbles, super OP magic artifacts, mana transfer, and actual factual RPG elements, like every character has stat sheets and they go really into depth on their abilities and even their weapons. But how about the story? Shiro Emiya is our strapping young protagonist for the day, living a peaceful yet irregular life, cooking breakfast every day for his teacher Taiga and his best friend Sakura, and practicing strengthening magic at night in this little shack here. Magic that his dad Kiritsugu Emiya taught him. He may or may not be imported in the lore and the other side stories. And he's also an archer, but he doesn't actually do archery anymore due to an injury or something. I don't really remember. Maybe it's important. Maybe that's a spoiler. I forgot I'm wearing a mask. <laughs> he also spends his days helping out anyone he can with some odd jobs around town. During one late night at school, he witnesses some magical assholes fighting at night and gets fucking iced. Thankfully, one of his classmates, Ren Tosaka, just so happens to be a mage, and she ends up saving him. After this and another altercation with Lancer, he learns that he is a master in the Holy Grail War and must summon his servant. His servant is Saber who is actual King Arthur, but she was a woman the whole time. Trust me. Now he is faced with unbelievable adversity. Trying to survive the war, form alliances, keep the fighting to a minimum, and try to save anyone he can, as his dream of becoming a hero is challenged by crushing reality. The story is split up into three routes, which you must play in linear order. Fate, Unlimited Blade Works, and Heaven's Field. Each route also follows a different member of the supporting cast as the main heroine. The fate route is commonly referred to as the shonen one. It's arguably the least complicated, but it sets up everything quite well, and it does have a very charming love story. And some super badass moments. My favorite thing about the fate route is how much it focuses on Saber and Shiro's relationship together. Really honing in on how they relate to each other. Seeing how their pasts are similar the mistakes they've made and the regrets they have, bringing them together and helping them move forward together. Unlimited Blade Works is the other shounen one, but it has some really strong themes. Things like self-hatred, fighting against fate, and how the people around you help you grow. Also, Archer. That is all. Heaven's Feel, on the other hand, is the really fucking dark one. It has the best character writing out of all of them, and a lot of genuinely shocking moments. It really brings the Kino. Heaven's Feel is seriously one of the most gripping, exciting, and heart-wrenching stories I've ever experienced. It puts the characters and the reader in really uncomfortable places. At a certain point, you start to question your own morality. I didn't know what the right answer was, or if there even could be one. Finishing the story up, bringing everything together for a near-perfect conclusion. Now let's talk characters. Shiro Emiya is kind of my favorite protagonist. His story asks the reader, what does it really mean to be a hero? Shiro's got survivor's guilt from an incident that happened 10 years prior, and now he lives to be a hero, to help others, without valuing his own life. Throughout the game, his ideals are really challenged. The great thing about the three root story structure is that Shiro develops continuously through every root, even though every root does not happen one after the other chronologically. 
His character goes through a gradual change, ultimately ending up where he is at the end of the Heavensfield route. Then there's Saber, aka Artoria Pendragon. She's literal King Arthur, but she was forced into the role and never really wanted to be king, and she feels immense regret over failing her kingdom. But being summoned by Shiro, they fight together through all sorts of things and end up learning a lot from each other, being able to move past their regrets. Ren Tosaka. One of the progenitors of the term Sundere. But I think that's regressive. She doesn't start out overly aggressive towards Shiro, but she feels the need to push people away by nature. Also, I think she's probably the best match for Shiro romantically. I mean, like, Shiro gets by, but he definitely wouldn't have been able to do it without Tosaka in any route. Sakura Mato. From supporting character to deeply traumatized heroine to literal villain, she appears in the first two stories, but honestly, Heaven's Feel is where, like, all of her development is. The worst parts of her past are brought to light, alongside with, you know, a bunch of magic stuff, and it ends up being some of the most challenging material I've seen in fiction. It seriously goes into some really dark places, and Shiro, as well as the player, are faced with the question, how far are you willing to go for someone you love? Then there's Elias Feel von Einsburn, She's pretty cool, I don't actually have much to say about it. She was supposed to get her own route, but it was cut. Uh, her servant is Berserker, which is literal Hercules. Don't worry, it's not all doom and gloom. The supporting cast is fantastic and brings a lot of light to a pretty dark story overall. There's this trio. I forgot their names, but I love them. They're amazing in every scene they're in. Issei is king shit. There's that one teacher who falls under the description of normal people. And there's Taiga. We love Taiga. And of course Shinji Mato, literal piece of human garbage. We party every time he dies, which is at least once a root. Kirei Kotomine. Bruh. And the servants. I feel like when I talk about fate, sometimes I go on about the non-servant characters too much but the servants are some of the best characters in the entire series. There's Archer. If I tried to explain why Archer is so cool, I would probably be spoiling the entirety of Unlimited Blade Works. There's Lancer. He's cool and hot, but he dies in every route. There's Ryder. We love Ryder. Berserker is literally Hercules. Every scene with him is so cool. Gilgamesh? It's a bit of a giga chat. As for the presentation, this is a visual novel, not just a normal paperback. I should probably explain what a visual novel is for people who might not know. Basically, it's just a game that's about 80 to 90% text, and you make choices that may or may not affect the story as you go along. The game is presented with a multitude of CGs and character sprites, with a singular square text box in the middle of the screen where the text scrolls down. The music is fantastic. A lot of the time, the themes are a little more chill, but there's some real standouts, especially the Emiya theme. And Takeshi Takeuchi's art is just fantastic. And the way that fights are presented are just so cool. They're basically animated, but you know, they're just stills and the screen shakes and moves around. And there's all kinds of effects. It's really cool. Now, there is gameplay. I wish I could come here and tell you that this is some complex JRPG with super unique mechanics, but no, it's books. But throughout the game, you have to make several choices that may or may not lead to a dead end. When you die, you are sent to the Taiga Dojo, where weirdo comedy versions of Taiga and Ilya will tell you what you did wrong. They're all a lot of fun, and you get a stamp every time you see one, so you can go for a 100% completion run and make sure you die at any possible moment. If you're playing the real Tanua version, which you likely will be if you decide to pick it up, there is a relationship system as well. Basically, for making certain decisions throughout the story, you'll get points towards each character, and you'll see some extra scenes. Now, I played the original version, so I don't actually know if these relationship points affect the ending you get, or if they just affect extra scenes that were added in after the fact. Fate Stay Night is kind of my favorite story. The themes of heroism, idealism, the tragedy of it all, the moral dilemmas, the extensive lore, the nuanced characters that keep getting developed every single route. I hope I've been able to effectively show you why this thing has made such an impact on me, 
and maybe even piqued your interest in playing it yourself? Speaking of, if you're looking to read the VN, there's several different ways. There's the physical editions, there's several actually. I own this one, I don't have it with me at the moment, but it's there, there'll hopefully be a picture. There's several download versions which vary between being the full game and being every route split up into a separate game. And there may or may not be a cheeky browser version. There's also separate versions of the game itself. There's the 2004 PC release, which is 18 plus by the way. The 2007 PS2 release called Real Tanua, and the English version by Mirror Moon. The game has not been officially translated in English because the IP is literally too expensive to localize. So any English version will be a fan edition. The one that I played is the 2004 release, but with the voice acting from the Real Tanua version. But the version that most people are likely to play these days is the Ultimate Edition. This is the closest we're probably ever going to get to a Fate Stay Night remaster, and it includes all the content from all the versions, and you can toggle it any way you'd like. Big thanks to Mirror Moon for actually translating this thing. There are also several adaptations, if you don't feel like reading. In 2006, an anime studio by the name of Studio Dean adapted the Fate Route into a 26-episode anime series, and it's certainly something. Whoa, surprise cut in. I take back everything I said. This series is actually fire. Studio Dean did a fantastic job with what they were able to back in the day. It's kind of old. It's kind of cheesy. It doesn't 100% follow the source material at times but it's really good as an adaptation when taken in its totality. It nails all the character beats, it nails the action scenes, and honestly, it has a really cozy feel. I would highly recommend everyone to watch the Dean adaptation, especially if you've been turned off by it in the past. You should give it a real shot, because I genuinely think it's a good show and a good adaptation. Then in 2010, they made a movie out of Fate Unlimited Blade Works, and if you ever wanted to watch a film that has the same kind of pacing and feeling as a video game speedrun, this is your movie. I'm talking literally clipping through a wall and into the final boss room level shit. That's the pace of this movie. If you don't plan on reading the VN, this is another good starting point. Ufotable's 2011 adaptation of Fate Zero, which is a novel series released a couple years after the game. Set 10 years prior, it follows the story of Kiritsugu Emiya and Kirei Kotomine. Then in 2014, Ufotable returned with a television adaptation of Unlimited Blade Works. This one is incredible. It works great as a TV show. It flows so well episode to episode. It has so many great moments, basically anything with Archer, and in terms of the OPs, EDs, and insert songs, it's got the best music. Like, out of anything. Then, from 2017 all the way to 2020, Ufotable adapted the Heaven's Feel route into a trilogy of films. They are so incredible. So many fantastic moments, perfectly adapted, some badass, some genuinely terrifying. Anything with Ryder is great, anything with Archer is great, Saber Altair is a thing. Saber Altair versus Hercules is like one of the best fights ever animated. And like the game, it does a near perfect way of concluding the entire story. Fate Stay Night is a fully fleshed out and complete story with a satisfying conclusion, but if you want more, you can find it. Like I mentioned, there's Fate Zero, which is a prequel novel and TV show, Hollow Ataraxia, which is a direct visual novel sequel, an anime and manga where all the characters just cook and have a good time and nothing bad happens, called Today's Menu for the Emiya Family, and also there's Fate Grand Order, which is kind of a monolith. And maybe once you're done with that, you'll understand what this shit is. As always, I've been Protagonist. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, that's about it. Peace.